wanted to I was kind of hoping to save the one I did earlier um, in case I had a week where I just really needed a video but um, it was so short and I just been thinking about it a lot and I it's usually like getting it done moving past it is what um, what you need to do but today we're gonna talk about this smoke trail um, a little jaggedy there that's not a factor of my implementation that's just sort of unity's trail renderer they're much nicer trail renderers but um it kind of looks good enough so i just went with that um i might update it if i find it to be a problem so if you're not familiar with trail renderers they basically create vertices and they actually billboard too which is really nice they create vertices um as they move along like in object space or as it's like parent moves along in object space and then those verts, you know, create a mesh that you draw a texture on. And um, what we're going to show, however, is this right here, where we have the trails moving up. So that's not something you can normally get just out of the box from Unity, um, like the trail renderer itself. But you can just script everything um, we actually can do something about it and show those casings there too it looks pretty cool um, the effect might be pretty obvious um, we're just gonna move those verts up so let's go ahead check that out what I call it have it in casings Sorry, allergies are bad. I'll try to mute it whenever I sniff or anything. So this here is just a rigid body. Um, I just let the physics handle it. There's some other things about how I spawn it that won't be important. What we're really looking at is this right here. So we make a local variable, my trail, and it's a trail renderer. Um, you can do this with almost any one that you download, I'm sure. You just need to be able to have access to all those verts. And I think you could do this with a shader. I couldn't quite get it. Um, and this was performant. I mean, I threw out like 60 casings and it was, it didn't, I didn't notice there was no chugging. So um, that's not like a ton of casings, but that's a lot of verts being generated and ran through again at runtime. Anyway, so. You have a trail renderer and you get the position count. So position is like a, I think it's a set of two verts. Sorry, it's gonna be a little bit vague because of the documentation for the trail renderer is a little bit weird. But basically you set position and you need the index and you need a new position. So we, you know, we're just for looping it. Go to my trail dot get position and we get our position at I. And so that's the vert set, which is, I think, two verts, you know, in the array of all of our verts. And we get that position, and then we offset it. That way, you know, that's just that's the best way to do it because we don't... Anyway, it's just the one way to do it. <laughs> just do it with the offset. So I have a basic trail speed. And we'll go ahead and just try this real quick. work so show that and then I'll show you other thing I do and then I was gonna have it show the other like the third thing you can do but I got lazy <laughs> I didn't know how else to say it so let's what's the input sorry I changed the controls recently but right there you can see they're just kind of moving straight up you know they're they're offset a bit because of the object motion, which looks nice, but they're pretty similar. Um, they all sort of like fade out at the same rate. Um, that fade out is something we do just through the render, but what I mean is they kind of just trail up at the same rate. So what we can do is. You've probably seen noise, 
you know, creation. You just need some kind of randomness. When I generate the casing, I just generate a random value, 0 to 1. And um, already you could do that and just multiply it by that. And that way, for each casing, at least each bit of smoke would come up at the same rate. But what I do also is put our current position in a sine wave and then put that randomness against that as well, multiply it, and then I have just like a control here to control the intensity. And then plus two is to offset it, because if we didn't have that, let me show you. If you're familiar with sine waves, you already know where this is going. Let me chat, nope. Rock doing it, and that's not quite doing it. Basically, well, that's a little strange. Put that in a little bit wrong. What happens is trying this. You get like an up and down. So you know our sine waves look like this. And we want to make sure we kind of push that up so we don't have any going down. Maybe you want that effect. Let me get it. Kind of. You can see how it's more, and maybe you like how that looks. Pay close attention. You can see some of the smoke is like going down, some of it's going up. Um, so that just like pushes it up. And because it's randomized, you know, it gives us a little bit of variation at the, the rate that smoke basically just goes up. Uh, I mean, that's basically it. <laughs> um, we just put that on a trail renderer. So let's grab the casing. It's active. Smoke trail right here. Um, and this is just some stuff I do to sort of taper out the tra tail of it. I'll also show the texture that I use. Um, a lot of times when I'm making a new effect, I sort of throw in a bunch of textures I already have, which is really nice about Unity. You can just kind of go through everything because you don't know what might look good because this trail ended up looking really good. Basically, you can see this trail here. And as we step through, you know, these are coming up. We can find any that are going at a different rate. You can see this sort of up down motion. Some of that is from the case and like casing is spinning. But it's kind of hard to tell. But like this is coming up faster. And that's what that sine wave does. It kind of flattens out, you know, our initial setup just had it sort of rising up at the same rate. It basically just makes it so some of these verts go up at a faster rate than others. And we don't just randomize it. We use a sine wave that we can smoothly go through each of them. So if we think of like an array, you know, all of our vert positions are an array going from left to right here. And then based on that sine wave, we go up and down like this. And then we have some randomness to sort of offset it. Um, so that's basically what we're doing. All that, you can see it looked kind of weird there. And like I mentioned, we'll just go through the, look at the texture real quick. Um, also in this, I just faded out. It's just a shader that we've used before. We have this intensity. Um, just basically fade it out. <laughs> um, I think I do some little fancier stuff here that the tr the tail also is less intense. That wouldn't make sense. I feel like that would have to be something else. I don't know. I don't know why that's in there, too. <laughs> I don't remember. The main thing is just about how that smoke rises up. So that's what this video is about. Also, wanted to show the texture I use. Because it's this weird sort of split, sort of cloud here. 
We have one going like this and one going like this. And this sort of V shape gives it that nice wispy look. Um, not much else to say, really. Oops. Every time. So just having that, sort of having two sort of major forms, maybe even like a little bit of a split here, um, just ended up working really well. If like, oh, we need to look at the instance. Hold on. If you're watching on YouTube, feel free to stop now. <laughs> We're just sort of messing with some stuff now. Go to the instance here. Okay, here still. Grab like this. Doesn't look quite right. Grab like a big cloud. Maybe you think that looks okay. That yeah, thick and gross. Um, but just having that split and that V shape there really helps to give it that wispy look. So anyway, sorry I'm losing my voice already. <laughs> um, that ought to cover it. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, again, the actual casings are set up with a rigid body and I just let the physics handle it. When I spawn it, I just random randomize the force and things like that. So it just pops out. Um, certain effects like with her rapid attack here. Like pop them out behind her like that oops looks like I updated the whole render which is really annoying <laughs> there we go and then for other effects I just sort of pop it in place like that it sort of drops to the ground and bounces There we go. That's the actual texture we want. But anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, your patronage has been amazing lately. You know, we're all in, in lockdown here. Um, they, my state is looking to open up already. I live in Wyoming, if you don't know, and it's just kind of kind of run by goofballs. <laughs> we're a tiny state, but it's just like my mom said this morning. We have we went into lockdown with five cases. And then we're opening back up with like 300, 500. I can't remember what they said. Um, I don't know. I know people need to get back to work. And, but anyway, <laughs> thanks for watching. <laughs> if you have any questions, let me know. Um, if you feel like you could support me, go to Culture Attack. Excuse me, patreon.com forward slash Culture Attack. Or you can follow me at Twitter at Culture Attack. If you ever need help with your projects, how to do a visual effect, how to, you know, further questions on a video. Uh, feel free to ask. I try and answer right away. Generally pretty good at it. Um, and I just love helping people and I love teaching and love making videos. And thank you all so much. Love you. Catch, catch you later.